Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today I am so excited to announce that finally, after years and years of asking, Apple has finally released an iOS version that allows for progressive web apps to have push notifications. That's right, so now starting today, March 28th, we can start building out solutions in Glide that allow users to receive push notifications on Apple devices. Glide has been chomping at the bit since it's inception in 2018, 2019 to allow users to accept push notifications, but have been waiting patiently for Apple to give this release. So now that we have this ability to receive push notifications on devices with installed Glide apps, let's go ahead and talk about how we can enable a push notification experience in your Glide app. We'll talk it through step by step and some of the things you might want to consider along the way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add push notifications to my app. Now, one thing that Glide has provided for us is a nice handy documentation within their help docs about push notifications. And you can see in here under the special considerations that the app must be installed to the user's home screen before push notifications occur. Apple has also mentioned this under their WebKit documentation that the app again must be installed to the user's home screen which means that if they're on a mobile device they have to go to share add to home screen right or if they're in chrome they actually have to click over here in the omni box and say install to computer something like that in order for push notifications to occur on that device and they have to do that per device so if i want push notifications within an app on three different devices I have to install it onto those three different devices. So we'll wanna remind our users of this as they go about enabling push notifications. We'll build that in just a second. So now that we've enabled push notifications, we have to think through how we're going to, one, allow our users to accept push notifications, and then two, in which situations we're actually going to alert our users with a push notification. Let's tackle the first thing, enabling push notifications. So users have to opt in in order to send a push notification, right? They have to accept that request. So the best way to do this, and this is typically what you see in most native apps as well, is that when a user first signs into an app, there's usually some sort of onboarding experience where they need to accept push notifications. So we're gonna build that out here. Here I have in my app, a simple onboarding screen. It's got a three different screens to it. Just a little welcome screen. I'm gonna have a enable push notification screen. And then finally, like, hey, fill out your information screen before completing the app. To set this up in my data table, I have just their user information. And then I have two columns over here. I have profile completed on, which is a date time column. This is typically what I do for most apps that have an onboarding experience. So that when they finally hit that last screen and they say, yep, let's go, it writes a timestamp into when they completed their profile. And I use this as a visibility condition for the different tabs in my app to hide and show tabs until they've completed their profile. For example, you can see here, the only tab I can see is this welcome tab. I don't see the other tabs yet because they haven't yet completed that their, their profile. That column is currently empty, all right? So um, I have a column for that, and then I'll have a column for allow notifications. This would be a true false column for me. Um, this will allow me to toggle on and off notifications. Uh, still playing with, the, with this concept. Again, notifications need to occur per device, which makes this a little tricky to allow. Um, but uh, we're gonna see if this will at least allow us to accept push notifications moving forward for that device. All right, so we're back in our layout here. I have, again, a screen that just takes me to the next screen. And then we want to enable push notifications. And we only want them to move forward once they've clicked this button. So I have this continue button that I'm gonna hide. So I'm gonna say options under visibility. We're gonna hide that button until they've said that, yeah, we're gonna allow notifications. Okay, um, we also need to enable push notifications. Um, and we need to remind our users that they need to add this to their home screen in order for the notifications to work. So we could probably put a little hint text in here. Uh, we can say hint, throw it right above the button block and say uh, note, um, the app must be installed 
onto your home screen, onto your device for push notifications to work <laughs> or to, uh, to function correctly. Something like this, right? Um, and then we can have the button to enable push notifications. Okay, so to enable push notifications, we're gonna create an action. And the action I have here is under the integration section here. Uh, we do have the push notification section. And one of the actions you can select is to request to send push notifications. We're not gonna send anything out quite yet. We're gonna just request to the user. And then, um, regardless of what they choose, we're gonna set the value to true, um, and that will allow them to unselect it at a later date. Glide is working on the ability to really allow and disallow notifications per device through um, another column. That's probably gonna come in the next couple of weeks or so, um, but for now, this'll, this'll be fine. Okay, so we have this push notifications button. When the user selects it, They'll get a pop-up message that says integrations playground would like to send push notifications. Do you want to allow or cancel? Hopefully they say allow. And then it's going to write that true value and allow them to continue to the next screen. Now, once they've enabled it, we could probably want to hide the button so we can set a visibility condition to only show when allow notifications uh, is empty. And so then they'll continue, they'll complete their stuff. They say, let's go, right? This let's go button, just so you see it. Uh, just writes a timestamp to the profile completed on, which then sets the visibility condition for all the other tabs in the app. And now they're back into the rest of the app here. So now you have to determine when you would use push notifications in your app, right? You'll probably want to use it throughout your app, especially if you really want to leverage the push notification feature. Uh, to keep things simple, I'm going to show you a couple of use cases. First use case is maybe that whenever there's a new blog post, every user gets a push notification that says a new blog post has been added. Click here to view the blog post. Uh, if this blog post is your blog post, like I'm the author of this blog post, right? Maybe whenever someone leaves a comment on the blog post, the author specifically gets a push notification. All right, so let's take a look at each of those. So first, Everyone gets a push notification whenever there's a new blog post. So imagine that there's some sort of select amount of users who are authors, and whenever they add a new blog post, right, then uh, their email address gets added along with the blog post as the author, and then every other user gets a push notification. So in that add form, we can set up our blog post. We're gonna create the title, right, the content of the blog post, uh, if there's any URLs, the date is going to be automatically generated. And the author to the date time, that is. Okay, and then the user's email, either selected here or under user's email address, will be written to the author. Okay, now on submission of this form, we want to do a couple of things. So we're going to create a new action. The first thing is we can show notification just to the user that says, you know, blog post added successfully. And then we can show a push notification to every other user. So I'm gonna search for push and we're gonna send a push notification. Let's go ahead and configure this action. So one thing to see here is that the action will use one update per recipient. So make sure you have a plan that has enough updates. Also make sure that you're using your push notifications selectively for now in order to not run out of updates or be charged extra in case you are on a tight budget for your app. Okay, so here we can send to everyone or a specific user. In this case, we're gonna send to everyone. The title and the message could be something from a template right? Um, or we can just type it in, right? A new blog post has been added, right? We can say something like, uh, click here to view the post. 
So I'm currently just typing something in kind of quickly, but as you can see, you could use a column value, like a template column, to customize or personalize the message that's received. So you can be something like, hey, Bob, a new post about title has been added to the Integrations Playground app. And then the message can be, click here to view the post or something like that, right? And then the link to screen, you'll select the triple dots and choose link to current screen. So then that way when they click on the notification or they click on the button, then boom, they'll be taken directly to your installed app to that screen um, and see that post. Okay, I'm gonna hit close and let's go ahead and test this out. Here is the published version of this app. Again, we have to make sure we install this app to the home screen first. So we have to hit share at the bottom and then add to home screen. Okay, so now we should have that app living on our home screen. And now we'll sign in to the installed app. You see I have to go through onboarding, I'll hit continue. I need to enable push notifications. Pushing that button allows me to accept push notifications. I now see continue at the bottom of my app. I'm gonna go ahead and complete my profile. And now I'm in the app. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and exit the app. And let's just wait here for a second while I add a new blog post. So let's add a brand new post about push notifications. So when I hit submit on this blog post, I should see a new notification pop up in the notification center. Let's take a look. So submit, it says it was added successfully, and there we see it. Now it says click here to view the post. Um, this will take me into the installed app, which is wonderful. Um, but as you'll see, it doesn't actually bring me into the post itself. It just brings me to the list of blog posts. So I'm sure Glide's still fine tuning some things here, but we should only expect improvements from here on out. So now let's look at the situation where we want to send a push notification to a specific user. Perhaps whenever a new comment is left on a blog post, the author receives a push notification. So let's dive into our blog post and we're gonna tap into this leave a comment form. So our setup here is that we have blog posts, posts have comments. In the comments field, we have a post ID so we know which blog post we're referencing. And then we're relating it back to the post to grab the author's email as part of that comment, okay? In the form container we're using, right, we have our submit action, and the submit action is gonna have a show notification to the signed in user saying, hey, you just left a post, great job. But we're also now gonna send a push notification, not to everyone, but rather to specific users. And then under the recipient's email, we're gonna choose the author from that lookup column. All right, so the title again could be something like a new comment has been left on your post. And the message again can come from a template column or we can keep it simple and say, click here to view the post. The link to screen again will just be the link to the current screen and then close. So let's go ahead and leave a comment on this post and see if the author receives it. Hit submit. Okay, I received it on this side and on the author side, there we go. You have a new comment, click here to view the comment. I tap on it. Now I did tell that push notification to bring me directly to that comment, it didn't. So it might be a little bug that Glide needs to fix, but as you can see, the push notification did come in and it came in almost instantly, which is fantastic for a progressive web app. Now the last thing we need to take a look at is what if you wanna send a push notification to a subset of users? In this case, we need to make sure that the email addresses that we're adding to the push notification action are within an array of email addresses. So in our data section here, we have a list of users. And again, let's say only these select users had allowed notifications. And we only want to send notifications to those that say that they wanted to allow them which means we can allow users to toggle on and off notifications on their user profile. Again, maybe somewhere in their user profile screen in here, we could have a toggle that says like allow notifications and they can toggle it on and off, something like that, right? So we're focusing on the users that said that yes, we want to allow notifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a column to the right here and we're gonna say uh, if notification then email. So it's be an if then else column. And we'll say, you know, if allow notifications is checked, 
then display the email address. Otherwise, display nothing. Okay, so we have email address, email address, but if we say that this person doesn't want to receive notifications, then they're not gonna be part of that list anymore. So again, in that blog posts, maybe we don't wanna send it to everyone, but only to that subset of users. There's a few ways to do this. One way is just to use a lookup column. So I can create a column here. We'll call this um, recipients. And it's gonna be a lookup. And we're gonna look up that if then else column. So we're gonna look up within the users table, that if notification email. Okay, so here we see that these are the two users who should receive a push notification. All right, so if you already have that condition set up here, a lookup column will just grab whatever is available. Another way to do that would be to join emails together and then split them using a split text column. All right, so let's go back to our blog posts and under our push notification action, instead of sending it to everyone, we're only gonna send to that lookup column now. So we'll say send to specific users where the recipient email is those recipients and then close. Okay, so now when a new blog post has been submitted, only those specific users will receive the push notification. So this is a high level overview as to how to use push notifications within your Glide app. Right now we are literally on day zero <laughs> of allowing push notifications within a Glide app. So I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of intricacies that are gonna be unfolded as part of how you can leverage this feature moving forward. I'm sure that the push notification action will receive a bunch of updates and advancements as use cases grow within Glide, but at least you have this solid foundation as to how to add push notifications to your own Glide app. If you like this video, make sure you hit the buttons below so you don't miss my next ones. If you have any questions, you can always leave me a comment below, reaching out to me at Twitter at rpetito, and as always, thanks for watching.